This is the last part of lesson 3.2. We're at 3.2D. We're going to be adding rational numbers using rules. The rules for adding integers also apply to adding rational numbers that are not integers. If you remember, integer, that's a positive or negative whole number. So that would be negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. These are all integers. Rational numbers are fractions, decimals, any number that can be written as a ratio of two numbers with like a numerator and denominator. That would be a rational number. Just remember the denominator can't be zero. So let's quickly review the rules for integer addition. We add the absolute values of the numbers and use the common sign for the sum. So if they have like signs, if the add-ins have like signs, the sum will be like the add-ins. We have a negative 3 and a negative 5. This is addition. We're going to add the absolute value, which is going to give us an 8. And the sum is going to be negative, just like these add-ins. For different signs, we find the difference. And look at this, different difference. We find their difference between their absolute values, and the sum takes the sign of the greater absolute value. So if we have a negative 3 plus a positive 5, we find the difference between a 3 and a 5, between their absolute value, that's a 2, and it takes the sign of the greater absolute value. Which one's farther from 0? Well, 5 is, and it's positive, so we have a positive 2. The associative property of addition states that the sum is always the same regardless of their grouping. We can add these three add-ins together by first grouping 3 plus 5, or we can group 2 plus 3. 3 plus 5 is 8, so we have 2 plus 8, that's a 10, and 2 plus 3 is 5, 5 plus 5, that's a 10. So grouping numbers with like signs may help us add several add-ins quickly. If we see that these are both positive and that's a negative, it might help us to quickly add the positive numbers together. And the commutative property of addition states that we can add in any order and we'll get the same sum. So remember, there can be more than one way to solve a problem, but one way is usually easier than another. Emma bought 7 and 25 hundredths yards of fabric. She used one and twenty-five hundredths yards to make a skirt and two yards to make a dress. How many yards of fabric does Emma have now? So the first thing we do is use a positive number to represent buying the fabric and a negative number to represent using fabric to make the skirt and the dress. Our equation is a positive seven twenty-five hundredths plus a negative one and twenty-five hundredths plus a negative two. We can group the negative numbers first, then find their sum. We have a negative 1 and 25 hundredths plus a negative 2. That's going to be a negative 3 and 25 hundredths. Now we can add the 7 and 25 hundredths. We find the difference between them. The difference is 4 between their absolute values. And we take the sign of the greater absolute value, which would be the 7 and 25 hundredths, it's positive. We have a positive 4. Emma has 4 yards. And we can think, does this make sense? Because she bought a little over 7 yards, and she only used a little over 1 and 2 yards. Yes, that makes sense. There would be about 4 yards left. Now, do you notice that I have parentheses around this negative add-in and parentheses around this negative add-in. So when I grouped them, I used a bracket. When parentheses are already being used, we can use brackets as grouping symbols to make the grouping easier to see. We also could have put parentheses around these two add-ins. Brackets are easier to see, aren't they? This one says Mrs. Lee spent $8.50 for apples to make pies to sell. In the morning, she made $7.25. In the afternoon, she earned an additional $4.75. Why 
What was Mrs. Lee's overall profit or loss? So we're going to use a negative number to represent money spent to buy the apples and a positive number to represent money earned. Our equation is negative 8 and 50 hundredths. We're going to add a positive 7 and 25 hundredths or $7.25 because she made that. She earned that. Then she earned another $4.75. So we're going to add 4 and 75 hundredths. We're going to group numbers with the same sign and add them. We have a negative plus a positive plus a positive. We can add these two together and we get 12 as a whole number. Now we just need to add negative 8 and 50 hundredths plus 12. So we're going to find the difference between their absolute values because they have different signs. We find the absolute value of each add-in and we find their difference and see that it's 3 and 50 hundredths. We take the sign of the greater absolute value 12, it's positive, so it's going to be a positive 3 and 50 hundredths or $3.50. We know that Mrs. Lee earned a profit of $3.50. We know she made a profit because the partial sum of the positives are greater than the negative number. This is $12. As a whole number 12, that's greater than what she spent, so we know she made a profit. So let's use some common sense. Here we have a negative 2 plus a positive 5 and 75 hundredths plus a positive 25 hundredths. We can look for compatible numbers that make a whole number. This positive 5 and 75 hundredths and this positive 25 hundredths make a 6. Now we can just add a negative 2 plus 6, which is a 4. We find the difference between them because they have different signs. We take the sign of the greater absolute value, the 6. It's positive. We have a positive 4. We can also use common sense by making zero pairs with additive inverses if possible. Here, in this equation, we see we have a positive 9 and 25 hundredths. We have a negative 9 and 25 hundredths. They create a zero pair and cancel each other out. That leaves us with just 2 and 75 hundredths, which is our sum. So here's our helpful hints. When adding three or more rational numbers, we group like signs together to add quicker. And we look for add-ins that are additive inverses to quickly eliminate zero pairs. And we look for compatible numbers that will easily make a whole number. We're now finished with Lesson 3.2. We're going to be moving on to 3.3. The first one is subtracting positive rational numbers. So now as you do your schoolwork or your homework, try using those three helpful hints to help you add a little quicker. Have a great day, and I hope you join me for the next lesson. Bye.